This is Noraville Dam update and discussion, March 28th, 2017, Tuesday. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably saw my first one uh, that I put up on uh, March 10th, where I'm, I was discussing the emergency spillway and uh, the failure point there with the, the recreational parking area and the, that they really need to do some sort of a design modification to keep water away from that end of the whole deal up there. And I'll get back into that in a, in a minute. But uh, at any rate, since then, you basically, it's been all good news. Um, three seminal events. Uh, the first one was uh, on March 17th, they um, reopened the primary spillway, the damaged primary spillway. Um, they had calculated prior to that that they, they would need a consistent flow of about 40,000 CFS to minimize the amount of erosion. Um, and as you can see in, the, in the, some of the images, on this video that, that that clearly was the case as they were throttling it back today or rather I'm sorry yesterday um, so that was that was that uh, then uh, I think on the 22nd I don't remember exactly but at any rate they they lifted the emergency evacuation standby I guess really is probably the way you would describe it so they're, they're no longer under that warning that that possible threat uh, under the Oroville area and, and other, some of the other communities down there so that's that's good and then uh, yesterday they turned off the primary spillway again, um, and they they did release the uh, DWR did release a video today, which you know I got a few images here. Um, it'll be good to see in the next few days get a real good look at what happened erosion wise. But you know it didn't look too bad. There was a little bit of stuff you can see where it's starting to stick, to eat in underneath the granite a little bit maybe there, but not bad. Um, so there's that. Um, so anyways, the, as of today, the, the lake levels are like around 837 or so, and they're, the inflows are real mild now. They're, they're just real, you know, 20,000 or something like that is this part of the day. And they go up 25, probably 30,000 or so during the, the day when it warms up a little bit. Um, and the weather is going to warm up a little bit, so they're, they're going to probably be increasing next week. Uh, but for the here and the now, not too bad. Um, in terms of the snowpack, that's again that is the big that is the huge X factor here, um, as the, the the map for from weatherstreet.com shows. But there, the NOAA data there, there's still somewhere between uh, you know 75, 100, 150 inches of, of snow, you know, all up above in that that Toraville Dam Feather River watershed area. It's just it's not it's still there. It really, the bulk of it is still there. There's been significant melting on you know since. March 10th, or, or you know, when I posted that first video, but it's still up there and it still needs to be um, slowly, if possible, melted. Uh, and, and that gets into the other thing. The other, the other real blessing here has been the weather went from stark raving, lunatic mad, you know, crazy storm, warm, hot, you know, cold, many feet of snow, many inches of rain, to pretty darn sedate and pretty just nice and cool. So, you know, the the, the uh, the big unsung hero here has been the, the, the change in weather because had it not changed, whole different situation, whole different situation. I think most people are aware of that. Um, so let's get back into, first of all, the primary spillway. Um, the quick look today is that it looks pretty like whatever wear was minimal. They'll have to get, obviously, this is just a, this, this quick, this release today. Water hadn't even really dried up and stopped, so we don't know a whole lot yet. But... The, the, the concern still has to be that because that damage occurred on that side of that spillway, on the dam side of the spillway, you can see this, this kind of this wedge that's working into the, into the hillside there. And you've got those very precipitously perched, you know, big chunks of real estate there that, you know, I'm sure they're keeping an the eagle eye on. But that's going to be the main thing that they want to look at when they look at the, uh, when this thing dries up good. Because... That's, you know, even though there was, it's pretty clear water, it's really clear water actually running down there, you know there's erosion going on, and water just, you know, it's this unstoppable force. And the other thing that's occurring there is, of course, that it's it's basically a river going downhill that's been created by that divert, you know, that diverting shunting to the left because of the damaged primary spillway. So it's doing what all rivers want to do, which is it's going to go down there, go one side, then other. It's going to try and straighten itself out because water wants to find the most direct route from high point A to low point B. You know, that's just the way it works. So, but in the process, it's going to, it has to do these little zigs and stuff. And those are the places I'm sure where they're going to be watching real closely to make sure there's not a whole lot of um, erosion that's going to be undercutting that ledge there. So there's that. 
<clears throat> so getting back to the uh, the emergency spillway and, and basically the overall scheme of what they're going to do with this this dam over the next year, you know, provided there's no more crisis situations this spring. And you know, I, I've kind of tried to find some discussions about design and all, and, and there's a little bit of stuff out there. There was a discussion of a bunch of uh, engineers and stuff, I think done by the Sacramento Bee maybe or something like that. I'm not even sure if it was it was it was up to date. But it was astonishing to me that they this that the whole upper they went they sort of got into the the uh, upper the emergency spillway deal and they sort of almost touched on that that deal with the the uh, the parking lot. But that's the whole that's the whole bowl of wax here as far as I can see. You know, I I went back and um, you know I, I looked at the pictures again and all. It's it just it's an elevation thing all the way. It's an elevation deal completely. Um, they they needed really in truth they needed the lake when they first uh, designed it back when they needed that lake to be 880 feet or they needed to extend that wall up you know uh, 10 whatever however many feet all the way out to that hillside there going north and shunting it so the water stays away from that other side because it's it's just not it's just you want to keep water away from it we saw that on February 12th so uh, you know they I think that there was some uh, some other commentators. Um, who were saying, yeah, it was uh, almost like it was a write-in on the design. And I, I tend to believe that's probably the case. I I was imagining uh, discussions, you know, within the weeks before May 4th, 1968, when they dedicated it, where, you know, the state, and between the state and, and ORDAM officials, you know, and the, the state saying, like, uh, well, do you have an emergency spillway? And ORDAM official says, oh, yeah. Well, does it work? No. Okay, you're good to go. Because that's how goofy the design is. It, it's clearly, it got swamped by two feet of water going over the emergency spillway. So there's a, there's a big problem there with the fundamental design. They have, to, they have to change that to make that emergency spillway believable. And to make it, you know, if this ever happens again, and with who knows, with, with, with what's going on now climate-wise, climate, climate wise, you know, who the hell knows? Um, this stuff could be commonplace now. So they need to be prepared for the, you know, the unexpected. Because they didn't expect this, and it did happen. Because that was also probably no doubt part of the thinking was, hell, we'll never have to use this thing. Are you crazy? You know, because they thought, oh yeah, all situations we got under control. We can we can let go 250,000 CFS. We got dams and levees up upstream, etc. So they didn't expect it, but it did happen. So hopefully they will deal with that emergency spillway elevation issue. I think it's a big deal. So um, as far as 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 people living down below. If I I don't live there, I'm I'm 3,000 miles away here in in southern New Hampshire. I'm safe and sound. We got we got snow. We're trying to get rid of, but other than that, we're fine. Um, but I'm a, I'm a former Californian, you know, and, and I, I have an affection for the people and for the state. And you know, if I was living below Orville, I'd be watching three things. I'd be watching, um, firstly, of course, the lake levels from day to day. That you can get that on that on that that feed, that hourly feed. I'd also I'd also watch check out the link that I'm going to have posted on the video notes. For the um, for the snowpack, um, and and look at your long range forecast. Look what's going on, um, and just keep an eye on that stuff, because uh, even the officials involved here, when they lifted the order, um, you know, uh, Sheriff Honia and uh, Director Croyle were, you know, they were very cautious about, hey, you know, keep your ears to the rails here, because this situation is is still, you know, is still unfolding until all that snow is gone, and until they're really into the warm season where basically most of the big time precipitation is done. So, anyways, that's um that's where we're at today, folks. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, give a like or a shout out or whatever. Thanks.